Hey guys, thanks for watching again. I know it's been a little while since the last project. Uh, this one's a fun one. I really did have a lot of fun. I loved making these. It's really easy. You don't need a lot of room. You don't need a bunch of tools. Um, it doesn't cost much. So, and it's a project that you can carry around with you, which is also kind of fun. And I have to thank Ted for suggesting this to me back in September, I think it was. He showed me a picture of these wood rings that he made. And he didn't go into too much detail on how he made them, but he said there's other people making them online. And uh, also he said he's going to be making them and selling them on his Etsy shop. So um, let me show you what we got here. I'll move the camera. Oh, by the way, I'm wearing this. Uh, I got uh, had an x-ray the other day. And uh, I thought I fractured my arm. Turns out the doctor said it's um, most likely tendonitis. So I gotta lay off and uh, it hurts to move. I turned 40 in a couple months, so maybe I can expect more of this kind of stuff. So here's the packaging of the wood veneer that I got. You can pause it now and take a look at the details if you want. But I spent about 38 bucks and I got several sheets of wood and it's all different species of wood. And uh, this stuff is really thin cuts. Okay, you can see how easy it bends. This is kind of like uh, thickness of a cereal box cardboard. So we have walnut, oak, that looks like a pine, not sure what that is. You can see all the different kinds. So you can make a variety of rings here. Walnut's kind of like, a, not a reddish brown, but a grayish brown. And depending on how they cut the wood, you get these different patterns in it. Um, I don't know if it shows up well on camera, but it kind of, the light changes. It's really weird. It's almost like a suede or a microfiber. So anyway, this is handy to have for all different kinds of projects. What they didn't include was purple wood, which I thought would have been fun. I've seen it in some other packs. I should have grabbed a different one. It's actually a purple colored wood. So let's start. Oh, no, let's take a look at a ring and then start. This is the first one I made. I put a little brass Triforce inlay there. And I like the colors here. I like this reddish brown and it's dark enough that the, the brass shines and pops a bit. This is my son's, my 11 year old son made this one. This is his first attempt. So you can see it is not hard to do. And let's see what else. Here's my second one. I did this brass inlay a little differently. This one's gonna be easier if you have a hard time working with brass. So I'll show you how I did that. And this wood's got this little bit of a wave to it. I kind of thought that looked neat. Don't worry about doing it perfect in the beginning because you're gonna find you're gonna like different woods better. Some are easier to work with than others. First thing I will do to make a ring is cut some strips like that. Even though they're bigger than I want the ring, it gives me some uh, extra room to work with and sand it down. So this is about a half of an inch. You don't really need to measure. And again, this is 12 inches long. So about a half inch, 12 inches long. So you take your wood at this stage Put it on the sandpaper, put your finger on the back, do that until it's got a little point. That way when you roll it, there's not a step. It just tapers down into itself really well. All right, and next we go microwave it. Get a glass of warm water and you can soak it first a little bit to help it bend. So I'm gonna wrap it around like that. And I am just letting it microwave until it starts to boil. Now you wrap it around something that's going to be a little bit smaller than the size of the ring you want to make. Let's see how this is bending first. Yeah, that's all right. I'm just wrapping it around my X-Acto blade. It's only been in the glass for about 10 minutes or so. 
And then take a rubber band just to hold it together. So now this needs to dry. You can just let it dry overnight. You might uh, speed it up on a heater or use a blow dryer or something, but I'll just let this sit for a while. It's been a few hours now. I sped up the drying time with a blow dryer and that seemed to work out really well. It still needs a bit more time to go. Let me show you this one that I did a few days ago. The problem with this one you can see is that it didn't roll nicely. Um, it actually just folded. You can see all the kinks there. It's going straight and kinks. If that's your problem, if this is happening to you, you just need to put this back in the hot water. Let it steam longer and try it again. Um, so I did a few others. They came out nice. Let me show you this one. This one's all dry. Got the rubber band off. You can see how well it keeps its shape. It doesn't unravel. Let's take a second now to talk about ring sizes. This is my wedding ring and I don't like to wear it when I'm working with power tools because it can get caught on things or smashed and uh, it actually can really injure you pretty bad if it does get caught on something. And I found that using sockets is the way to go because everybody's got a set of these and if you don't, your neighbor probably does. But before you glue it, you need to put on some packing tape. Not much, just one layer around will do. Just a bit of tape and that will help the super glue not to stick. So put some tape on, whatever you use and put that packing tape on, it's gonna really help you later. Just put it on your socket like this and then take some time and push down really hard and roll it. And you're gonna do this for as long as you feel like it's, it's tightening up. Now, what's happening is it's rolling out any gaps in between the layers and it's bringing them all to the outside. So it's getting tighter and tighter and I'm not letting up. I'm always holding on to it so it doesn't slip loose again. And let's take a little bit of time and smash the layers flat, if you know what I mean. Like, um, you don't want this raising, you want them all flat, you know what I mean? Like the center isn't higher. Does that make sense? So I'll just do this a little bit more. Okay, and this is what we're left with. You can see there's no real gaps in between the layers of wood. Okay, and I'm not letting go, I'm keeping this pretty tight. So now I'm going to use this. This is a super glue. You can see it's really liquidy. You can hear it sloshing around. You want to see it flow like water inside when you buy this, whatever brand you get. And you can see here it says it's penetrating. If you buy the gooey kind of super glue, it's not going to seep into the wood fiber. So it's really not going to work. You have to get the liquid stuff, okay? Right, and I always get it on my fingers, but it's usually not that bad. So just a little bit, it's just soaking in. It's just like water. And it does not take long to fuse the layers together. You don't want to keep your eyes directly over your work. You're going to find that out pretty quick because it, the glue fumes go straight up into your eyes and it burns. I'll put this piece, this little piece slivered off. Let's just glue that back on. You're just coating the whole thing in glue and being careful not to get it on your fingers. Okay, we'll give this a few minutes to harden and we'll be back. Okay, it's been about five minutes and if yours is really stuck, like I can still move this if I try. <clears throat> if you're having a hard time getting yours off, get a crescent wrench. 
put it on like that and just apply some pressure down and you should be able to break it free. If you want, also you can get, uh, because it's a socket, you can put that in so you have something to grab. You can, I can twist this now. Whereas if I don't have that on, this is pretty hard to twist. I got nothing to grab. So that's really handy. Also, you can put this end in your drill <laughs> and just use a power tool and get some sandpaper and sand it flat. But uh, I don't think we're gonna do that. I think we're just gonna keep this real simple. Now for this lip, let's take that off. And I'll just cut this down. There we go, just so it's not so rough at the very end. That'll work. Ah, there we go. The glue didn't seep all the way in, so we're going to have to put some on the inside. We can do that a bit later. But now let's clean up the edges of the ring. Okay, this is 150 grit sandpaper. And we're doing this just like we did the Mario pipe. And you'll find that it sands down very fast. So just about 30 seconds of sanding and it's starting to look really good. Next thing we're going to do is figure out where we want to put the inlay. And you want to choose the spot of the ring that's the thickest. You can see because we're winding it and winding it and winding it, the, on the inside of the wood it ends right here. And on the outside of the wood it ends right here. So right here is the thickest part of the ring. And that's where we're going to put the inlay because when we're working on it we're sanding it down a lot and we don't want it to get really thin. So if we did it on the thinnest side and then sanded that down a lot, it'd be really thin here and uh, really thick on the other edge. So it's important to pick the thick edge if you're gonna do an inlay. This is the brass that I use and this is just hobby brass. You get this at a lot of different hobby stores. Almost all of them have it. I think you can even uh, get this at Home Depot. And it's thinner than the wood veneer. It's easy to cut. You can use tin snips, but these seem to bend and leave an impression in. It's better if you can have some snips like this that are actually more like nail clippers, fingernail clippers, where they just pinch it. They're not going to warp the metal very much. The triangles we're cutting out for this Triforce are really small, so each triangle you see here is actually the whole Triforce. We've got to cut those into smaller sections. You can see here's three triangles. It's enough for three rings because each one of these triangles has to be cut up into three smaller triangles. It gets really difficult in the end. So what I suggest is just cutting up a ton of triangles and then you're going to find three that match the correct size. Let me show you what I mean. And I just like to eyeball it. It's a lot easier cutting a bunch of triangles and finding ones that match than it is trying to make three of them perfect. So here's all the triangles that I cut so far. This one's big, this one's average, that one's kind of small. So I'll keep cutting them until I have three that look about the right size. Then I'm going to hold them in these little pliers here and file down the edges so that they all, all three match. Um, so it's hard to get the angles exactly 60 degrees um, on all three angles. So I can file them down a bit and when I have three that look about right then we're good. If you don't have a file, just use sandpaper and, and sand down the edges. All 
I hooked up a macro lens on my iPhone so you can see what we're filing off on these little edges. It's a little hard to hold this still, but here you can see the edge. When I use those clippers, it kind of puts this bevel on it. And so I'm just grinding that down, filing it down so that it goes into the wood straight and clean. So what you'll do next is position them so that they're all lined up the way you're going to want them on the ring just to make sure that it looks right. Maybe one of them needs a little bit more filing. Maybe one of the triangles is a little bit off. But once you're happy with it, then keep the triangles in that shape and we'll move on to cutting out the ring. This is the part where it transitions where the end of the wood is. So I'm going to sand that really smooth so that there's no bump. Now this next part, you want a brand new blade. Don't do it on an old blade, it's gonna be very difficult. And try to keep the tip of the blade from breaking. It's really easy to do, you want that tip nice and sharp. I should really buy these in bulk. It's really hard to pick these up. So just get the tip of your finger just a tiny bit wet and it'll stick right on. And when it's where I want it, I'm going to push it down really hard with my fingernail and scratch in on the edges, kind of tracing it where I want to cut. Okay, so there's the triangle. And if you have a sharp blade, it's not going to be very hard to dig this out. Just don't twist the blade so you don't break off the tip. This isn't a normal working position for me. I have the overhead light really close. And I'm trying to keep this on camera as well. But you can see just Shave out the little bits slowly. Go to the edge, flick them out. And you want a tight fit because you can just smash the wood and make the wood bend around the middle. Now that's really good. That's fitting in perfect. It needs to go a little bit deeper, but you can see at that angle it fits right in. Isn't that nice? Okay, so I'm going to do all the others and then we'll skip ahead. I think the top triangle is just a little too big. Let's file that down. The top one needs to go deeper as well. That'll work. That'll be good enough. All right, now let's see. How do you glue it in? I want to keep these in the same way that I took them out. Just a little bit of super glue. And that should work. Let's see if I can fit that in. I think I got it in wrong. It doesn't seem to go in. Let me move it around, take it back out, flip it over, and this is the part of the project where you pretty much are going to glue your fingers. There we go. 
Yeah, I think that's the right way. Let's put in a little bit more. is not wanting to go. Come on. There we go. And the next one. Smash it in. It's flat as you can and this one uh, it doesn't look like it's angled right let's take this one back out spin it yeah that's a little better let's put some glue back under there Give it a little bit more. <laughs> this thing is flicking around. Was that it? No, that doesn't look right. Seems to fit right. Let's just smash it in. That'll be good. You want to try to get it lower than the wood, just by a little bit, because we can sand the wood down. I'm smashing it in, and now we'll just wait for this to dry. It only takes a few seconds for this to dry, and I'm just going to use this same rough grit sandpaper. And you're sanding it down so that the wood and the brass are flush with each other. And you can actually sand the brass down as well. It's gonna, it's not that hard of a metal. And this part of the process also helps clean up any scratches in the brass that you might have made when you were cutting it or pushing it in. So I can see right here, it's a bit of is a bit of glue. Once all the brass shines the same way, then you know you're done. All right, and there it is. Pretty nice, nice and shiny. Now I'll go down to a smaller grit sandpaper. What is this, 400? Let's see, I'll step it down. I'm just going to do a lot of sanding now. This is 220, then I'll go to 400. You can keep going, going to the thousands if you really want to shine this thing up. Okay, now I'm going to balance the ring out. I put this inlay in, but I can see that it's set a little low. This ring is bigger, I mean thicker than I want. So I want it a lot narrower. You want to size it after you put in your inlay, because that way you can adjust adjust the uh, thickness. You can see now how the Triforce is more in the middle of the ring, so easy way to do it. Don't worry too much about it, just sand it to the right, um, the right spot. Okay, the last sanding I did was about 600 grit, and I'm gonna, I forgot to coat all of the inside with crazy glue, super glue, whatever you want to call it. Um, and what this does is, you know, like it says, it's gonna penetrate, it's gonna go all the way in so that you could get this ring soaking wet and it's not gonna get ruined. And it's on my fingers. 
if I keep moving it I'll be all right. <laughs> Let's just get this and then I'll do another sanding and then we're going to wipe it again with a finish coat of glue. I just want to make sure the whole thing's got a nice coat on it. All soaked in all the fibers. And that's going to keep it uh, waterproof and strong. Yeah, that should be good enough. Okay, so about a few seconds, let this dry. We'll do one more sanding and then a polished coat of glue. You can do it this way put some of this super glue on a rag and just smear it. It's a really thin coat. And there we go. What do you guys think? I think it came out pretty good. Let's compare it to the first one. Which one's better? Now this first one I put a spray coat on and it doesn't feel that nice on your fingers. The same lacquer that we used on the swords, you can it feels kind of um, grippy, rubbery. But the super glue as a final coat is nice and smooth. So don't use a lacquer. I wouldn't recommend it. Here's the second ring. Let me show you how to fill this in another way. I went and cut out all the Triforce shapes. I can show you that on this camera here. This might be an easier way for you to do it. I hollowed all that out just by eye. I didn't match up any triangles. It's a lot easier to do it like that. I'll show you how we're going to fill this. We're going to grind the brass into a powder. You can get brass powder by making it yourself. And you want a fine file. You don't want a rough file because you want fine bits of brass. And I'm just going to grind it down. And you can use plumbing fittings, those are brass. Um, if you wanted other metals like copper, I'll show you. We'll do a pile of copper, a pile of aluminum, and a pile of uh, brass. Okay, doesn't take too long for it to build up. Let me use this razor blade. We're going to scrape it all together. And for copper, you can use, this is just copper wiring, electrical wiring. Again, plumbing parts, even old pennies. They have to be past a certain year. I think it's 1984. Maybe somebody can comment on that. Um, they started putting cheap metal in pennies. Let me uh, do this in a different spot so I don't mix it with the brass. There we go. So, yeah, older pennies contain a lot more copper. I'm using a, uh, an aluminum nut. For something, I don't know what it is, some piece of hardware. And it files down really easy. All these metals are soft, so it doesn't take much effort to file them down. So here's the three metals, and it doesn't take much to fill in something like this ring. You don't have to you know, file it down for too long. Let me show you close up. There is the brass. See how small those bits are? The smaller um, the file, the finer the file, the better this is going to work for you. There's the copper. And there's the aluminum. Brass just falls in there like that. And you want to pack it in tightly. So I have this kind of a jeweler's hex screw that I'm going to gonna um, tamp it down in. So you don't want gaps or anything like that. Now just fill it up with a drop of super glue. And let that harden. See that Triforce is starting to show up. Uh, 
that came out pretty well just a light sanding of 600 grit and that's brass powder and it's quite thick too so it totally beats any kind of paint you could do because it's not going to wear off just a little coat of the glue on the inside and outside and this is done all right guys let's take care of some business here we have some viewer mails to read. We've got to end the contest. I got to thank uh, Ted again for this project. What a cool one. It's a lot of fun. You know, I like projects that you can, you know, hold and, and um, take with you and things like that. Things like this that are small. You can uh, make them for uh, cheap and give them as gifts, things like that. Really fun project. So Ted, if you have any suggestions on how I made it, how I could have done it differently or easier, let us know in the comments section. Um, anybody who tries this also send in your photos. I'd like to see what you guys do. You know, you can see online other people will use two different kinds of woods, uh, to a light and a dark color. There's a lot of other things you can do with these rings that I didn't show you. So um, send in photos if you have them, if you guys decide to make them. And again, you're awesome. Thanks, Ted. And go to his, uh, find his Etsy store. Buy his products if you want. Um, and speaking of viewer mails, this one we got, uh, this one's from Jonathan Emerling. And so remember last time I was, I mentioned in the last video that we did a, uh, my brother, brother-in-law and I did a mystery science theater. So he sent some photos of stuff he did, but let me uh, get to this first one. This photo he sent, this is really cool. You're gonna love it. It's a game cabinet. Check out what this does when you open it up. And uh, isn't that awesome? And if you look, look at the corners of the bricks. Those, that's not just painted. Those are like 3D, they're sticking out. So, and then he built his bots here. You can see there's a crow. You know how slick that is. And if you don't know what this show is, it's all right. Especially if you're international, you probably have no idea what I'm showing you. And there's his Tom Servo and a finished Servo. And uh, should I go get mine? Maybe I'll just show a few pictures. Um, I'll run a few pictures right now while I'm editing and you can see this is the um, show that we did back in 95 and you can see I had a lot longer hair back then. Uh, we filmed it at a high school that built a brand new uh, studio but nobody was using it. It was so new. So we just had access to that and made all those props and anyway but that's you know half the people probably don't know what I'm talking about but I really wanted to share that. Thanks for the message. That was really cool. Um, here's one from Johannes, and he's from Norway. He says, hi, and thank you for your awesome videos. You got me really inspired. So I made a Christmas present to my nephew, and here's the result. So if you check out the uh, scabbard, it's identical to the one that we did in the video. He did a good job on that. Also, the shield, you can see he did a 3D kind of a relief triforcer. So good job, and that's really cool. I love that you made it as a gift for your nephew. I love hearing that kind of stuff. So awesome, Let's keep sending in the photos, guys. Uh, speaking of which, here's one sent in by Landon Grayville. You can see he's quite proud of it, and he made his just with a hand sander. I think um, that's just the, you know, the little buzzing palm sander. It's a lot more work than a belt sander, but you make do with what you have. It didn't stop him, and I think it came out really nice, thanks. Keep it up. Um, and here's a here's a strange story. So one of our viewers, um, Javier, who's just awesome and just uh, I I can't say enough about him. He actually um, contacted me. He works um, for Google, and he says, "Hey, we're doing setting up um, the translate feature where viewers can translate into different languages and add subtitles to the videos." And so he's been busy working translating some of these videos into German and you guys can do it too. If you speak another language, you could really help this channel grow by translating the subtitles into whatever language you speak and submitting it. And that way anybody from, you know, if you're from another country, then the people from that country who don't speak English can still have access to the video. So that's really cool. Um, so if you want to do that, check that out in the little buttons below. I'm, not totally familiar with it, but if you click the CC down below, you'll, you'll see it. 
And uh, so he's been translating, um, Javier has, and he's done a few in German. I'm trying to get them done in English first, but that takes me a long time. If you're not bilingual and you can at least translate some of the videos in English, go for it and submit it. And uh, that'll help speed this along because I'm a bit slow when it comes to doing that. And if you got, some of you have time on your hands and like to do that kind of stuff, but um, you know, it is a little bit of work, but it's kind of fun to do at least uh, a little bit. So. Anyway, so Javier was at work and he's made a sword and shield and, and things like that. And he looked, I guess, in his um, colleague's office or whatever, and, uh, and he sees this. This guy made a sword and shield and he's like, whoa, what are the chances? Huh? This channel is not that big. So these were made by Florian Nyman. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, uh, but you can see he did an absolutely killer job on the stencils. Uh, I don't know if you used a vinyl um, cutter but man that is nice also you can see put some leather on the handle and I think we'll do that in a future video that looks really cool and it probably feels really nice when you're holding the sword too he actually um, made this all with um, at least the sword with no power tools and that's uh, funny that Javier saw that you did that what are the chances anyway let's um, end this old giveaway we're giving away and I said I'd give this away before Christmas, Kylo Ren. So let me make sure there's nobody, and we're gonna change the way we do the giveaways. I'm spending a little bit too much time compiling all the names and things like that. I think I'll, I'll, I'll have to change it because it's taking, it just copy and pasting all these into the lists and looking at the last lists. But we'll still do this the same way as we've done before. But in the future giveaways, it might change a bit. I might just announce the winners um, and not make it this big drawn out thing. Um, so let me double check and we'll see if uh, anybody, let me reload here, and we'll see if anybody else joins. So this is a current list. Lego City, huh? Okay, same as always, I hit paste. Generates random number, we find out the winner. Uh, in case you don't know what this is, we do giveaways kind of a lot actually now. It's kind of fun. Um, and in the Kylo Ren video, we're giving away this guy. So this is everybody who entered, and let's see how many entries there are. 84, you got at least a one in 84 shot of winning. That's not so bad. And some of you even more, because if you entered in um, your the previous giveaways as well as the last one, those entries are included, so you got a higher chance. So here we go, hit paste, and I, promise to give this away before Christmas, so we're doing that. Number 50, an even 50. Mew the Pinkman, congratulations. Oh, look at that, you had, how many entries is that? Look at that, his two previous entries, then he included the picture, and that actually paid off. You won, just send me a message privately, and I'll get that out to you in time for Christmas. And uh, he actually is, I think, the only one who sent a photo of his, with the code. Yep, nobody else did. So that paid off, and it's Christmas. Let's give away another figure. Now, the, I bought another one. It's a Skywalker figure. It's a plastic one about this big, and it's floating somewhere around here in the basement. Let me go find it. All right, here it is. Just found it. This a little guy, and it's not this orange. It's just that the screen's calibrated uh, for the computer screen. So again, hit paste, and let's find out the winner. Merry Christmas, guys. 14, Creeper Films HD, hey, you won. Congratulations, you entered in three times, so you got it this time. Send me your uh, address in a private message. All right, let's end this video. All right, well, that's gonna do it for this video, um, but before we go, I figured we'll do one more giveaway. It's Christmas, why not? Um, in this giveaway, I figured we'll do veneers. Some of you would want to make these rings, but you're not gonna go on Amazon and spend 20 or more bucks on veneer. And so all you're gonna need is a razor blade, um, super glue, and uh, sandpaper. I think that's all we really need to make this work. So, but I, I ask that you promise, if you enter in this giveaway, that you will promise you will make the, the rings once you get the little pack. And I think I'll include some brass clippings as well, so if you wanted to put a Triforce on, you can do that. All right, so promise you'll make the rings if you win, and um, send in some photos of the rings you make so we can all see them especially if you did anything creative. And as always, if you wanna send uh, any photos or uh, anything like that, send me a message on email, send it to happyadamirl at gmail.com. And uh, you can click the about tab 
on, on YouTube and get my email from there as well. And put viewer mail in the subject line so I can find it. A lot of times if I get messages from other places, it's just really hard to find them. Because they, you know, nowadays uh, you get so many messages from so many uh, different um, platforms like Facebook or whatever. Okay, so good luck on these guys. If you make it, I want to see it. Um, oh, the giveaway. Um, leave a comment and in the comments section, write something interesting. Uh, something interesting about yourself, what you like to do, where you're from. It's always fun to hear those kinds of things. Um, something interesting and include, is there a symbol we should include? Um, how about the asterisk? Because it looks like a snowflake. It's winter. Okay, so use an asterisk somewhere and that way I can do a find and find the winners. And I might, I'll, I'll probably announce the winners um, just some other way, maybe even before the next video, um, just to speed things up. So anyway, good luck on the giveaway. And if you make the ring, send some pictures and you guys are awesome. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching. Um, it really is helping this channel grow. I think we're getting close to 20,000. And um, also, let's see, Landon, seeing this picture come in from you kind of uh, made me want to show some of the things that I've made when I was younger. I don't know if you guys would like to see that kind of stuff. I have a lot of weird little things that I, I used to make with wood. Um, that might be kind of fun for you guys to see. So maybe like uh, 20,000 subscribers will do some sort of a retro project from my past or something like that. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Merry Christmas. Um, make a present for somebody. They, they love these kind of things. Handmade gifts like this are really cool and it doesn't take up much room. This one's too, so that's a pinky ring for me. Yeah. So anyway, you guys are awesome. Take care. I'll see you later.